Hey guys, welcome back to Illness Scripts Pencast. I've been away for a while, but I'm glad to be back producing content for your exam and board prep. I will be shifting the style of my videos a bit, and I welcome your feedback on how to improve the delivery, as well as any suggestions for future videos. Today, I would like to discuss a topic which many people find difficult, renal tubular acidosis. In reality, this topic is rather simple, especially for board exams. Clinical practice may be a bit more complicated. Once you determine the etiology of your acidosis is likely an RTA, the subject of a future video if you'd like, there are three types of RTAs that you must consider. In clinical practice, some of the parameters I'm about to discuss are not always cut and dry. However, as classic examples of disease processes are presented on board exams at every level, it becomes very simple to distinguish these RTAs on such exams. I will first dive into a bit of physiology of each one, and then conclude by telling you how to distinguish them in a pinch. RTA type 1 is also called a distal RTA, referring to the affected site within the nephron. The primary means for proton excretion in the kidney is via buffers, the predominant of which is ammonia, which becomes ammonium after complexing with a proton. While the proximal tubule is the predominant site of ammonia genesis in response to a metabolic acidosis, secretion of ammonia by the collecting duct constitutes about 80% of the urinary ammonia. The alpha and tercolated cells also control proton secretion via a proton ATPase. In a type 1 RTA, this activity is affected resulting in impaired ammonium secretion and thus a profound non-anion gap metabolic acidosis. The urine pH is often quite high in this type of RTA. Other important findings of a type 1 RTA include hypokalemia, which may often be quite severe. The exact mechanism for the hypokalemia is beyond the purpose of this review, but it involves electrochemical changes from the loss of proton secretion, as well as changes in serum aldosterone levels. These patients also have low urinary citrate, which in concert with the high urine pH increases the risk for calcium phosphate stones, stones that characteristically form in a higher urine pH. The major causes to be aware of for type 1 RTAs are autoimmune disorders, the major offender being Sjogren's syndrome. Certain drugs, like lithium or amphotericin, and urinary obstruction. Moving to the next RTA, which is RTA type 2, this is a proximal RTA, again referring to the affected portion of the nephron. The proximal convoluted tubule is responsible for the lion's share of reabsorption of filtered substances, and bicarbonate is one of the most important of these. Unlike sodium and other substances, the predominant means for bicarbonate reabsorption is not through a channel or a transporter, but rather through an indirect mechanism. An enzyme called carbonic anhydrase will convert carbonic acid, which is the product of bicarbonate binding with a proton, into water and carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide is able to cross into the proximal tubular epithelial cell only to be converted back to bicarbonate by an intracellular version of carbonic anhydrase. Defects in this process result in decreased bicarbonate reabsorption and thus metabolic acidosis, though often less severe than a type 1 RTA since the acid-base regulation in the distal nephron that we've already discussed is still intact. Also, although you may be tempted to assume the urine pH would increase because of the bicarbonate present in the urine, because the distal nephron acid-base regulation is still kicking, the urine pH remains actually relatively normal at less than 5.5. Unless one takes a carbonic anhydrase inhibitor, such as acetazolamide, the damage necessary to cause this type 2 RTA often results in more generalized impaired reabsorption of a myriad of other substances. This widespread proximal tubular damage results in a characteristic pattern called a Fanconi syndrome, which is characterized by the loss of glucose, phosphate, uric acid, among other substances in the urine. Really the easiest tell of Fanconi syndrome is the glucose. When serum glucose is normal, especially in a non-diabetic patient, no glucose should be present in the urine. If it is present in this case, this is almost diagnostic of a proximal tubular disorder. 
or I guess the use of an SGLT2 inhibitor, but that can be the focus of another day. This finding is referred to as renal glycosuria. Hypokalemia is often present in a type 1, in a type 2 RTA as in a type 1 RTA. The major causes in adults include multiple myeloma or amyloidosis, which both have a predilection for affecting the proximal tubule. Uh, drugs, especially tenofovir, is commonly tested, and certain heavy metals. Moving to the last type of RTA, the RTA type 4, uh, is quite different than the other two RTAs. It's really thought to be due to low aldosterone activity, either low, reduced levels or reduced activity through the receptor. Since aldosterone acts on the principal cell in the distal nephron to assist with potassium secretion, potassium levels are often high in this type of RTA, which is rather different than the first two that we've already discussed. The mechanism by which such a state results in metabolic acidosis is again beyond the scope of this review, but it may involve electrochemical changes from potassium losses that affect proton secretion, as well as a paired, impaired ammonia genesis due to hyperkalemia. As the intercalated cells are not directly damaged, the urine pH is often preserved at less than 5.5. The major causes of the type 4 RTA to be aware of are diabetic nephropathy, uh, taking non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs such as ibuprofen, calcineurin inhibitors, which are often used for uh, preventing transplant rejection, angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors and angiotensin receptor blockers, chronic heparin therapy, uh, primary adrenal insufficiency, and trimethoprim, which is part of the antibiotic Bactrim, um, as it's better known as, or trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole. So really, when it comes down to the exact way to distinguish these for a board exam, it, it's actually rather simple, and I have sort of a mechanism that I use to, to approach this, and I want to, to give that to you now based off of the things that we just talked about. And this is sort of the order that I would recommend doing it. The first is to identify that you have a non-anion gap metabolic acidosis, and these are often what's called a hyperchloremic acidosis. You then want to confirm that you have a renal source of this non-GAP acidosis. And again, this can be the source of a future video, but importantly, you would need to use the urine GAP to determine this. The next step would be to look for evidence of a Fanconi syndrome, as we talked about before, because this would essentially clinch a type 2 RTA. You're done. Move on to the next question. The next thing I would look for is if you have hyperkalemia. If you have evidence of an RTA, but you have hyperkalemia, this almost always clinches a diagnosis of a type 4 RTA. If you still don't have a convincing diagnosis, look at the urine pH. If it's high, and that means greater than 5.5, then this pretty much clinches a type 1 RTA. Note for clinical practice, however, uh, one can see urine pH is less than 5.5 in a type 1 RTA, but you can differentiate this um, by the urine bicarbonate response to administering exogenous bicarbonate. But again, that's a little more complicated than board exams, especially for a non-nephrology board exam. And last, if the RTA is not clear by any of these previous steps, which almost always will be on a board exam, look at the medical history for some of the classic associations and medications that we've already discussed that happen with RTAs. That's it. If you found this video helpful or interesting, please leave it a like and subscribe to the channel. I've been away for a bit, but plan to produce videos intermittently, especially if I get requests. Uh, please comment with suggestions uh, for future videos. Thanks, guys. Take care. Thank you.